Even though in Kendo we're using a blunt object, we're still treating it as a cut. And there's some things in the mechanics that I'm going to show you, especially towards the end of the cut. But let me show you a couple of good examples from some videos that I found. Okay, so what I have here is to have a video from Takenouchi. I like this just because he's doing it very slowly and he's kind of breaking down the motion so we can actually see it and understand it from here. So first, let me play it. Okay, so let me break down a little bit of the things that are happening here so we have a better understanding. The first thing you're going to see when he starts the motion is that he is engaging his left arm to push slightly forward and start bringing, you can really see it here because they don't show the tip, but he is bringing the tip up along with uh, the, the shinai. He's engaging both arms to bring the sword up. He's not just pulling with the right arm toward his body right he's bringing the shinai up he's actually moving the tip by also engaging the left hand and pushing with the left hand as he brings the arms up he is engaging the shoulder of the right arm over the bicep and he is obviously applying power with the left hand to push to keep pushing the shinai up as he goes up One thing that I'm really liking here, especially when he does it really slow, is that he is getting an overextension. So he's getting the full range of motion that he can get. And I know when you're doing like suburi, it might not exactly look like that every time. But this is a really good exercise to start practicing is to do a big range of motions. On the way down, he starts pulling with the left arm and the right arm is following the shinai, right? Towards the end, he does a slight pull with the left arm and executes the tenochi. And it sucks that they kind of cut it uh, so close to it. And that's why I have another video. But towards the end, he does a little bit of a pull and engaging the wrist, which you really can't see from him doing it so slow, uh, especially with you know a, a regular Wei Shinai. But he's also, when you do it right, you're also engaging your fingers, your wrist, and both hands. And funny enough, it kind of happens in, in enough timing. At the end of the cut, the execution of Tenochi happens slightly before on the left hand than it does on the, than it, than it does on the right hand. This video is from the Old Japan Kendo Federation. You can find it there if you wanted to see the whole thing. This is Kunitomo, if you don't know. And you may or may not know that he's one of my favorite Kenshis. And that's actually awesome that we got to see uh, him doing his cuts isolated like this. So let me play a swing regular speed. Okay, let's do it now in slow motion. Let's see what, what we can find out. The first thing I see is that the left hand starts engaging, so the tip starts going up. Right? So now we can see here that it does a little bit of circular motion. He is loosening in the tension on the elbow on the right arm. He's not pulling with the right arm. Instead, he's actually using the shoulder to bring the arm up and getting flexibility at the end, right? He's executing the push with the left hand to bring the sword up. Both arms have a little bit of relaxation at the end. And then when he cuts forward, for the swing down, he is engaging the left arm, pulling forward to throw the shinai forward. And the right arm, when he does the nochi, catches the shinai. It, it's working together to create power, but at the end, it's not pushing down. Instead, it's catching the shinai at the end of the motion. That's how you get that sharp stop over those type of cuts that when you hit, kind of sticks to the opponent and just lights off the opponent. So here he is pulling the shinai down and doing that, that same motion that Takenouchi was doing in the last video. That's kind of a little bit of a pull at the end. And the right arm is doing the tenochi to stop the shinai at the end. And let's see if I can play this in a slow enough motion, right? 
So he's bringing the Shinai down, pulling towards the end and catching the Shinai towards the right arm, um, with the right arm. And if you see, both of his hands are on top. He's getting a full extension. And at the end, he's relaxing the strike. And very important, right after the moment of impact, you should relax your muscles so you can execute the next waza. So in this case, he's doing big swings, right? So from this point forward, he starts the motion by pushing with the left arm and relaxing the right arm to bring the sore up, to bring the tip around and do the circular motion. So if you see his wrist right here, he's going to get that push in order to start bringing the sore above. If he wouldn't have done that, if you don't do that type of motion, what ends up happening is kind of like the tip kind of stays forward and does a longer motion on the way back. Kind of like this. A lot of the times when I talk about the swing and creating power, I do say use the left hand, use the left hand to create power. But we have to understand that there's two moments where you create power. The one part is the swing and the other one, it's the end of the swing and the moment of impact. It's very important that you engage your wrist and you engage your fingers at that moment of impact to create power with the Tenochi. Obviously you also get an added power when you have good kick and tie, but ideally you want to understand that there's two points where you're creating power. You're creating power with the swing. Mechanically, you're using a combination of the left and the right arm to bring the sword up and down, right? Because he's using the left and the right arm. When he gets to the end of the cut, there is, and I hate how they cut this video at the end, but right at that moment, right here there's a little bit of a pull and again you cannot it's not really evident here because he's not over exaggerating the motions but there is also a squeeze of the fingers and an extension of the wrist right here at this moment that gives that full extension but also creates power ideally you want to understand each part of the swing on the way up and on the way down in order to create good form and have power and also make it practical you always want to make sure is that you get rid of unnecessary motions so understanding all the elements of this I think is crucial to make it into your own kendo and to make your kendo better. Let me know what you think in the comments below. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel. And again, thank you very much for passing by, watching the video. And again, let me know what can I do for you and how can I make it better for you, okay? Thank you very much for passing by. So I'll catch you in the next one. Stay safe.